So the 2022 advanced hire, a paper one this time. So there's a change, a paper one known calculator, then there'll be a paper two calculator. Not that you actually need a calculator. It's perfectly possible to design the advanced hire exam so that it doesn't require the use of a calculator. You just keep all the answers, for instance, in exact form. Anyway, modified too, though, because of the to-doings, there's been a couple of topics missed out. There's the graphing of rational functions. That's a big topic. But as far as the exam's concerned, it makes little difference because they will never ask trivial little questions on that anyway. But there's also the three-dimensional geometry. Now that's a big topic. And you would get lots of long, fairly complex questions in that. So maybe you're grateful for that or not. Who knows? So what have we got to start with? So we go through the formulas, which you should know. But there if you don't. So there's the first one. Three, five, three and two. Five marks for just a little differentiation. That's an easy five marks to start with then. So the first one, for three marks. And notice they've given one in the form of y equals and one in the form of fx equals, just so you use the appropriate form. Well, as soon as you look at that, you should see you've got a rational function. So you're going to be using the quotient rule. Not that the quotient rule is, a, is anything different than an independent rule. That's just the product rule repackaged. You know, repackaged for instant use, ready-made. Now, the pattern for that, you could just put down straight away. If you wish, you could say, if I've got u over v, then it's going to be u dashed v minus u v dashed, see what's happening already, over v squared. I don't like that because look at my u's and v's, kind of tell them apart. The thing about that is that you have to make sure you keep a rounded bottom and a sharp bottom with them. Now, you could put that little mnemonic down if you like, but the thing is, I would say, if you know it there, if you know it to put it down there, then you could just as easily put it down here straight away. You could also go further. You could specify u and v. You can do it if you like, if that makes it easier for you, but it's just going to take a lot more time. Now, the pattern. The pattern's just the same as the product rule. Each one takes its turn. In the product rule, if you had the product, so let's say, three factors, so you've got these three functions, the functions of x, I'm not putting the functions of x part in, then if that had to be differentiated, they just take their turn. The f gets differentiated, the g and h wait. Then you add on the next bit, the f's been done. The g gets differentiated, the h waits. And then those two have been done, so the h gets differentiated. And it's the sum of those parts. Now, it's a sum, so you can do them in any order. And it's a product. That can be done in order. They're both commutative. So when you write down that pattern, you might have them in a different order. It makes no difference. Multiplication is commutative. It would just be a matter of aesthetics, or if there was a particular order you wished to have your answer in. If there's no particular preference, I would just keep them in the same order they are. Good at that. So, dy by dx. Right, the pattern is, you square the denominator. I almost looked at that to point at that. Square the denominator, and then they take their turn. So, you should actually do them in any order you like. It's all commutative, remember. I'll start with the, in the order they're given, the top one first. So differentiate the top, that's just negative 3. Now I'm going to multiply that, maybe I'll pop it in a bracket just to show that came from the top part. Maybe also to keep that negative under control. Leave this one alone, so x squared plus 4. Minus, minus of course because that, if it was written as a product, would have a negative index. And when you multiply that by that, it would be negative. Now you could keep them in the same order, maybe I'll differentiate the bottom one first. 2x just because it looks a bit more pleasing that way around. Now, having done that, that gets you the first two marks. The first mark was for knowing the pattern, essentially, you know, for this little bit here. But then that'd be too much for the one mark, so then they say things like, I'm doing one of the differentiations. And then the second mark is for doing the other differentiation. Essentially, you get two marks just for using the pattern for the quotient rule and doing the differentiations properly. Now the next mark is just going to be for tidying that lot up. So we've got negative 3x squared minus 12 minus 2x but plus 6x squared. All over x squared plus 4 squared. So the final mark is just going to be for tidying it all up. So I've got the x squared plus 4 all squared and then you've got 3x squared minus the 2x minus 12. And that would be it, unless of course the top factorises. Not that factorising the top would necessarily be a simplification, 
But if factorising the top resulted in a factor that was the same as this, then you would be required to do that. But you can check it quickly anyway, just by doing the discriminant, can't you? B squared minus 4AC, so you've got 4, that's plus. 12, 12 is 140, 448, that's not a perfect square, so that's it done. And there's the mark. Now, what if you decided to use the product rule? Because you still get the three marks if you didn't use the product rule. Well, the difference is you'd have to start off by changing that into a product. So 1 minus 3x times x squared plus 4 to the power negative 1. Then differentiate. I'm not going to leave enough room here because obviously that's going to be longer than that. That's one of the differences. That'll be longer and that's deeper. So that will be the same as before, negative 3 times x squared, which I have to write smaller, power negative 1, plus, now I'll leave that one alone, and then I've got this bit to differentiate as a function of a function, so it'll be times negative 1 of that inner part, multiplied by the derivative of the inner part. Sorry to get in a bit messier, I suppose. Oh, I forgot to put, and then take off one of the powers, so power negative 2. Now, I suppose at this point, I could reconstruct the fraction because I've got these negative indices. I don't really want So that part there, that would be negative 3 over x squared plus 4. And this part would be, I suppose I could tidy this bit up on top, couldn't I? I've got altogether here, I've got a negative there. So that's a negative 2x. But a negative negative will be a plus 6x squared all over x squared plus 4, and that come back down underneath into a 2. But now I've got to change the back into the same denominator, x squared plus 4 squared, which means that this bit's fine, because we already had that. This will have to get multiplied by another x squared plus 4. I'll just put it down. Negative 3 times x squared plus 4, and then plus the rest of it, so minus 2x plus 6x squared. And you can see... After all of that, you're essentially just down to that first line there. So obviously the rest will just follow on from that. Negative 3x squared minus 12 minus 2x plus 6x squared all over the x squared plus 4. Taking forever, isn't it? And then tidy it up as before. 3x squared minus 2x minus 12 all over the x squared plus 4 squared. So that's why you use the quotient rule. So part B then, for two marks, given f of x is this, cosec 5x, find f dashed x. Well, cosec x. If you don't remember how to differentiate that, which you should, you can look up the front. It's got it in there. So, one thing I will do though, to begin with is, I'll emphasise the fact that this is actually a function of a function. So you'll be using the chain rule by popping that into a wee bracket. So, f dashed x. Well, the pattern was negative cosec cot. Cosec of whatever goes to negative cosec of whatever, cot whatever. That's the pattern for cosec. And I think just for doing that, you actually get a mark just for copying it out the front. Where those were five x's. Multiplied by chain rule, because there's an inner function. The derivative of the inside, which is just 5. Now that means you're going to get another mark just for tidying up and popping that 5 to, 5 to the front. Or was that second mark for just differentiating that 5x to get a 5? Either way round, that's a pretty easy question for two marks, isn't it? When you consider that, um, how long was it? An hour for 35 marks. Well, that's just a bit under two minutes per mark. I mean, I, I'm, I've been talking, but see these two marks here? So instead of that being like three and a half minutes worth, you probably do that in 30 seconds. Anyway, negative 5, cosec 5x, most of you see there, cot 5x. I'll just take them out of the wee safety brackets now. And that's that mark. So there we go, five marks in the bag to start with. <laughs>